Hey guys, welcome back to the Gears and Tool channel. And today we are going to be reviewing Victoria Knox's Swiss Tool Spirit X. And this is their medium duty multi-tool. Um, I previously reviewed the Swiss Tool um, X and that's their heavy duty multi-tool. But today we're gonna to be focusing on this and uh, let's get right into it because there's a lot to cover. First, let's take a look at the sheath that it comes with. It's a relatively nice sheath, um, very traditional in its construction. It's made of leather, has some kind of brass rivets on the back and um, it's just simple flap cover. Unfortunately, it is Velcro. I would have preferred to have um, a snap button style um, attachment, but this is a uh, Velcro, which, you know, it works just fine. The tool slips right in. It uh, will just slip right out. It doesn't, you know, kind of stretch and hold the tool. Um, so you definitely want to make sure you use the flap with this. But uh, yeah, a relatively compact package isn't going to be overly bulky on your belt. It does have a belt loop. And um, yeah, so that's kind of the sheath. Not a lot to say there, relatively no frills. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tool itself. So the tool itself is relatively small and compact. It's 4.25 inches long, 1.3 inches wide, and 0 0.565 inches thick. So a relatively compact medium duty multi-tool. It is a little bit longer than the Letterman Wave, for example, but it is narrower and thinner in both directions than the Letterman Wave. So it's definitely in the same size category as a medium duty multi-tool. And also this weighs in at 7.04 ounces. So just a little bit lighter than the Letterman Wave. So all around, very nice size and weight. Just for a quick size comparison, you can definitely see that the Swiss Tool Spirit X is definitely smaller than the Swiss Tool X. Now I did a review on the Swiss Tool X uh, previously, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail on this video review. If you're interested in my review of the Swiss Tool X, there'll be a link in the video description below. Also, if you guys are interested in learning more about the Spirit X versus the Swiss Tool X, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a YouTube video on it. Okay, so that's the size and weight for you guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pliers. So these pop right out just like the Leatherman Wave do, but I will say they do operate more smoothly. They don't have that stiff feeling that a lot of other multi-tools have. So good job on the plier deployment. And as far as the features of these pliers, we have uh, hard wire cutters, the uh, regular wire cutters, kind of the plier grips, which have really nice deep cut teeth, by the way. And then you have your needle nose pliers. And these uh, plier heads are kind of a um, blunted needle nose pair of pliers, unlike the Leatherman Wave, for example, which have a, a very pointed tip on the needle nose pliers. I don't think either style is necessarily better than the other, but these do have more blunted needle nose tips on them. So um, I do like these pliers overall. Like I said earlier, the uh, smoothness on them is very noticeable compared to other multi-tools such as the Leatherman Wave, which are definitely stiffer in their uh, function. So overall, these are gonna be really good serviceable pliers for you. There are a couple things I wanna point out though. So um, in the wire cutter area, well, firstly, they're not removable wire cutters like the Leatherman Wave series, for example, but uh, that's not a huge deal. I haven't actually damaged my wire cutters before. I mean, you'd really have to be abusing them to damage the wire cutters. So I'm not gonna knock this tool for not having removable wire cutters. However, if that's something that's important to you, the Swiss Tool X does not have the removable wire cutters on it. Um, something to point out with the wire cutters, the hard wire cutters look great. However, the regular wire cutters, they kind of have this uh, second notch in there. And I would have preferred a just plain edge there, kind of like the Letterman Wave, for example. Um, I just don't think the second notch really helps it. If anything, it's a hindrance, especially when you're trying to cut larger diameter wire where it might not fit neatly into that notch. So that's a little bit of a knock I have on it. That being said, everything else on the pliers is really good. One of the best things about these pliers, in my opinion, is you'll notice the handles are not perfectly straight. They kind of have a swept design to them. And that has a couple benefits. The first is it um, doesn't dig into the center of your hand in the palm there, like some other multi-tools do that have kind of an abrupt straight edge on them. Um, the other thing is on the inside here, you'll notice that the two handles don't actually touch. And this is great for anyone who's ever used the Leatherman Wave pliers, for example. Uh, if you notice these two handle pieces here basically touch, especially if you're really reaping on them. And I've done this before and I'm sure a lot of you guys have too. You'll be prying on something and then it slips off and then you meet your hand gets caught in there and just pinches the hell out of you. I've gotten multiple blood blisters from that problem with the Leatherman pliers. So the Swiss Tool Spirit X does not have that problem. You have a gap in there, so even if you're using them really hard, it slips off, you're not gonna pinch your hand the same way you would with other multi-tools. So really thoughtful design on the handle of these pliers. I really appreciate that. As someone who's definitely bitten their hand a few times with uh, other multi-tools, that's a nice touch. And you guys are gonna have to bear with me as I go through this review. As I handle this, you're gonna see fingerprints all over this thing. This mirror finish, while it looks great, definitely is a fingerprint magnet. So uh, just kinda, you know, bear with me. One final note on the pliers is they're not spring-loaded. You have to manually actuate them with your fingers. It's not a huge knock, but it would have been a nice touch if they could have made these pliers spring-loaded. Uh, some other multi-tools are spring-loaded, but the standard is kind of that they're not. So not exactly a huge knock, but a spring-loaded 
other pliers are really important to you, you might need to look at something like the wingman or the sidekick. Okay, so that was the pliers. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other tools that the Swiss Tool Spirit X has. So first up, we have the knife. And this is a really nice pin blade style knife. Um, the cutting length on this knife is two and a half inches long. And uh, I really do like this shape that um, Victorian Ox puts on a lot of their multi-tool knives. Um, it's made from Victorian Ox's, what I like to call mystery steel. It's a pretty good, tough stainless. It's uh, got a higher chromium content, so it's not as hard as something like the Gerber multi-tools or the Leatherman Wade multi-tools, but because of that, it's not gonna chip as easily, it's not gonna crack as easily, and it's gonna be very rust resistant, which is gonna be a huge benefit for anyone who's working in a marine environment or anybody who lives in an area that has a lot of humidity. Think, you know, Louisiana, Texas, stuff like that. So I do like um, the type of blade material that Victorian Knox uses. However, there are some downsides to it. It's not gonna hold an edge quite as well as something like the Leatherman Wave here. That being said, the Leatherman Wave tool is gonna to be a little bit harder to sharpen in the field. It's gonna be more likely to chip or uh, break the tip off, things like that. So I'm not gonna knock Victorian Ox for their steel choice. I think it's a good design choice for what they're trying to accomplish. The blade out of the box is just razor sharp. I honestly think this is probably one of the sharpest blades that I've seen on a multi-tool straight out of the box. Something else I'd like to point out is the knife is locking. It's not a slip joint like a lot of their uh, smaller pocket knives are. And if you'll notice on the back of the handle, you'll see a lot of little cuts in the leaf spring. What this does is ensures that there's pressure on the other tools, and this ensures that each tool comes out individually without a bunch of other tools clumping up and coming out with it. So I like that personally. Uh, some people would prefer all the tools to fan out so they can kind of select which one they're looking for and put the rest back. But for me, it just shows how well this tool is designed and the build quality of it. So that's the knife blade. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next tool on this handle. And this is my favorite feature on this tool. It's the chisel slash wire strippers and box cutter. I think this edge is technically classified as a wire case cutter by Victorinox, but I personally think it's a great box cutter or doing things like cutting open concrete bags, bags of sand, things like that that you would not ever want to use a regular knife blade for. And since this multi-tool does not have a serrated edge blade, um, this little box cutter is going to come in really handy for you. So good job on the wire strippers, chisel, and box cutter. This is a tool that I use quite frequently. The next tool on this handle is the large flathead screwdriver, cap lifter, which we always need a cap lifter, and what Victorian Ox is calling a wire bender. And personally guys, I don't really think a wire bender is that practical. I mean, this tool does have pliers on it, which is what I'm gonna personally be using for bending wire. But uh, maybe there's a specific application for uh, having a wire bender like this. If there is, let me know in the comments below. I personally don't use the wire bender that much, but I do use the cap lifter a lot. And the uh, flathead screwdriver is a nice wide and thick screwdriver, so it works great for things like paint cans and other prying tasks. The next tool on this handle is the awl. And this is a really well-designed awl by Victorian Knox. A couple things I wanna point out real quick is it comes down to a nice point. It's not one of those micro screwdriver tips like you find on some other multi-tool awls. So it's gonna have excellent piercing capabilities. It does not have a hole in the side for threading um, cordage and stuff like that through things you pierce. I personally didn't really use that much anyways, but um, you know that's just something to note if that's an important feature to you. Um, the awl is super sharp, could definitely be used as a box cutter or cutting open you know, things like bags of sand, stuff like that. And then this is kind of a unique feature for this particular multi-tool is you have a hook. And not a lot of multi-tools have a hook, and I personally don't feel I would probably use it very much, but it is kind of a traditional tool that you see on a lot of Victoria Knox um, pocket multi-tools. It used to be that things like packages, bundles of newspaper and stuff like that always were wrapped in twine. So if you had a hook on your tool, you could easily pick them up and carry them with a larger, more comfortable handle. Um, in the United States, we don't really do that anymore. Maybe other parts of the world do, but um, I personally don't think I'm gonna be using the hook all that much, but it is there if that's something that's important to you. And the final tool on this handle is the saw. And this is a decent saw. I wouldn't say it's the best saw, I think that crown probably goes to the Leatherman saws, but it is a good saw. The teeth are very aggressive and extremely sharp. It's a little bit skinny, but it's robust enough for most tasks. And the spine is thinner than the area with the teeth, which means it's not gonna bind up very easily. So it's a very serviceable saw, but not necessarily anything to write home about. So before we go on to the uh, next handle, uh, a couple things I wanna point out is, like I said earlier, is for each tool you pull out, none of the other tools clump up, which is a really nice touch. Also, each tool has a finger nick that's easy to access. You're not uh, having to pull out multiple tools to access the one next to it. Um, each one has a clear spot that you can easily pull it out from. So I like that. There's been a couple multi-tools that I've reviewed where 
yeah, they're all there, but the fingernicks are all hidden by the tools that are next to each other, which kind of defeats the point. It means you got to pull two or three tools out just to get to the one you're looking for. So again, in true Victorian Knox uh, style, they've definitely thought out the design on this multi-tool to make sure that everything is accessible. One downside is, as you probably noticed as I went through this, is none of them are deployable with one hand. You definitely have to hold the tool with one hand while you dig for the tool with the other. So that's just something to keep in mind. There's no one-handed deployable tools on either handle. Moving to the other side of the multi-tool handles, the first tool we have is the file. And this file is okay. Uh, there's a couple things I like about it and a couple things I don't like about it. Let's start with the things I don't like. Uh, first is the file is kind of narrow. Um, some of the other multi-tools have a much wider file on it, which makes it easier for using the faces of the file. Um, the other thing is we have a double hatch and a single hatch cross-cut pattern, but no diamond coating anywhere on this file. I really like having diamond coating because it helps you do field sharpening on your knives and other cutting tools. But this particular multi-tool doesn't have diamond coating, which really only the Leatherman products have that. Most multi-tools have a file similar to this. A couple of things I really do like about this file is the cross cuts come all the way to the tip of the file. A lot of multi-tools kind of get lazy and come only almost to the tip and then kind of have the run out, you know, running off the tip. But this is properly cross cut all the way to the tip of the file. So good job there, Victorian Knox. Another touch I really like is on the bottom of the file, you can see that there's uh, hatchings or cross cuts here. Um, you can call this a metal saw or a slot cutter, whatever you want, but I really like having this. It helps you uh, slot cut things like screws or cut a screw head off when you need to. And a lot of multi-tools don't do this. They just leave this edge completely plain. And I don't really know why, because they already have the file there. It's pretty easy to put the cross cuts in, you would think. So um, definitely a solid file, not the best in class, but probably second place. So solid file. The next tool on this handle is the can opener slash small screwdriver tip. And uh, you know, some people will use this as a bottle cap lifter as well, but there's a dedicated tool for that elsewhere. This is kind of Victorian Knox's traditional design. They haven't really changed it in a long time, and that's because it works. Some people like the Eagle Claw style a little bit better, but honestly, I'm finding a lot of cans have the pull tabs anymore. So having a can opener of any kind is really just kind of a bonus feature. The next tool on this handle is the number one and number two Phillips head screwdriver. And I really do like the screwdriver for a couple of reasons. Uh, first is it has a nice long shank. So if you're working in a tight area or something like that, it gets the multi-tool handle away from your work surface. Um, also, you can you know, pull the handle apart like that and really get a long reach on the screwdriver. So good job on the screwdriver there. Something else I do want to point out that I do like about this tool is it has a proper screwdriver head on it. It's not one of those flattened out uh, 2D driver. It's a proper Phillips head driver. And um, something I do have to kind of point out though is this tool has such a mirror finish on it. And it's so smooth that sometimes this screwdriver head has a tendency to eject itself from the screw head you're trying to work on. I noticed this on my Swiss Tool X and this is no different. I do think Victorian Knox probably could have uh, coated the tip of this in some of that black paint that they use on some screwdrivers to kind of help give it a little bit more bite on the screw head you're using it on. So that's the screwdriver. Next up we have a small flathead screwdriver. And I believe this is a three millimeter variant and uh, not a lot to say about this. Again, kind of a longer shank, just like the Phillips head screwdriver, but uh, this is just a smaller flathead screwdriver. So good job there. And finally, we have these scissors on this multi-tool. And I know a lot of you guys really like scissors and you've probably been waiting for me to get to these. So um, there's a couple things I like about these scissors and there's a couple things I uh, think they could have done better. So the first is the scissors are, are nice and sturdy. They're made of nice thick material. They have a nice snick to them. They work really smoothly. They're spring loaded. Definitely a lot liked about these scissors. There are a couple things I don't like about the scissors though. Um, first is that you have the uh, spring torsion bar here, which I do like a torsion bar design over the kind of leaf spring design because I find the leaf spring can kind of pop out and come loose where these torsion spring designs tend to be a little bit more reliable. However, if you kind of notice, it doesn't allow the scissors to open up very wide, which means you're going to have a little trouble getting thicker materials in there. So that's one downside of these scissors. And while we have the scissors out, let's go ahead and do what I like to call the multi-tool scissors torture test. And if you guys have been watching my channel, you know that's paracord. Because in my experience, if a multi-tool pair of scissors can cut paracord, it's probably a pretty good pair of scissors. If it can't, they're just okay. So let's go ahead and see how this tool does on the paracord. So it snips pretty good. Um, it doesn't kind of you know force the blades apart to roll over. But as you saw, it has a hard time cutting all the way through because I can't get the uh, paracord very deep into there. It's just kind of stuck there in the tip. So when you cut, it has a tendency to want to slip out. So um, 
I'm going to give this one kind of a B rating. It's very good at cutting. It's not rolling over um, on the blades at all. So the blades are really good on this particular tool. The really downside is they just don't open up very far. So now if I were to kind of hold the paracord like this, no problem. But that's not the test. The test is when it's hanging freely, can it cut all the way through? And the answer is almost. So good pair of scissors, but just beware if you need to cut thicker materials, this probably isn't gonna be the pair of scissors for you. Okay guys, so that was all the features of this particular multi-tool. What are the pros and cons and who's this tool for? So first up, let's talk about a couple of pros. Um, I think the handles are really well done on this particular multi-tool. The fact that these handles have these sweeps to it makes the tool super comfortable to use both in the closed and open position. Such as when you're using this knife, you'll find that even though the tool has a mirror finish and is super slick, it kind of naturally you know, pulls your hand toward the center of the handle so you don't ever have that concern of slipping your hand up while you're using it. So good on the closed position and then also on the open position with the pliers, you don't get the bite area here that a lot of other multi-tools such as Leatherman have. And again, you don't have the sharp corners on the back that dig into the meat of your hand. So very comfortable handled on this multi-tool. So good job there. The extra chromium they put into this tool is awesome. It means that this tool is going to be very durable, very rugged, and have a lot of rust resistance that other multi-tools just can't compete with. This can be great for people in a marine environment, working on water systems, or just in a really humid climate. It's a very compelling size and weight at 7.04 ounces and only four and a quarter inches long. Um, having 26 tools at your disposal is a very capable multi-tool. A lot of other multi-tools just don't offer this many features and this multi-tool does it without making the features feel cheap or cheesy. Um, they're all very useful and very sturdy. The tool itself is very smooth to operate. Everything from deploying the plier head to, and everything just works smoothly like you would expect from a Victorian Knox. Okay, now we have to go over a couple cons because every honest review has to talk about the cons of every multi-tool. So first up is uh, because this tool uses a high chromium content uh, stainless steel, the knife blade isn't gonna have quite as good of edge retention as other multi-tools using 420 HC steel. The benefit is it is very corrosion resistant. The good thing is what you give up in edge retention, you aren't gonna pick up in rust resistance and its overall ability to resist cracking and chipping. Another con is this multi-tool only has one knife. It does not have a serrated edge blade like a lot of other multi-tools have. I personally would have really liked to have a serrated edge blade on this multi-tool. I would have been very willing to give up the scissors for an extra serrated blade. That being said, I am glad they didn't go with the combo blade. If they're only gonna have one blade, I'm glad that they have a fully plain straight edge blade. But the chisel does make up for this a little bit, giving you the box cutting blade, which enables you to cut open things like concrete bags and stuff like that without destroying your primary blade. One of the biggest con of this particular multi-tool is there's no one-handed deployable features. And uh, this kind of speaks to Victorian Ox's more traditional design on this multi-tool. And hopefully in the future, it'll come out with a one-handed deployable multi-tool. But currently, none of the features on this multi-tool are deployable with one hand. One of my biggest pet peeves of this particular multi-tool were the scissors. While the scissor design is overall pretty good, they actuate well, and they're very sturdy, the fact that they don't open up very far just limits the usefulness of them. Now this next con might also be a pro for some people. The screwdrivers do not have bit interchangeability like the Letterman waves do. Um, the downside for this is if you need things like a Torx bit or a hex drive, anything like that, you do not have the ability to add it to this multi-tool. Where on like the wave or surge, you do. The pro of that feature is you'll never lose this screwdriver so long you have this tool. Where like on the wave and surge, if you take the bit out and lose it, you're kind of shit out of luck. The final con I have for this tool is you have no ability to add a pocket clip. And for me, that's a big con because I really enjoy carrying my multi-tools in a pocket clip. The provided sheath is a nice leather sheath with kind of a traditional feel and compact size, but I like having the ability to clip it onto my pocket or the side of my tool bag. That being said, it's not a deal breaker, especially if you belt carry your multi-tools anyways. All right guys, so that's the ins and outs of this particular multi-tool. So who's it for? What's my takeaway? And I'm gonna say this multi-tool is really for everybody. It's uh, kind of like driving a Mercedes. Everything works like it should. You're not gonna have any issues with it. I really like how rust resistant it is. It's definitely gonna last you a lifetime. And this multi-tool offers a lot of features that other multi-tools simply don't, which means over time, as your needs change, this tool is still gonna be a great fit for you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, hit that like button below. It helps the channel out a lot. And don't forget to hit the subscribe and bell icon so you're the first to be notified when I release new videos just like this one. Cheers.